So guys, this cardboard here, this template, oh, it fits barely in the camera here. Well, this is the form factor of the new inverter I've ordered. Okay, let's compare this. Okay, it's a bit... Wow, that is a lot bigger. Well, this one is only 90.95 and the new one is 150. Yeah, guys, I have ordered another inverter. I'm... I'm too scared to use this uh, cable situation here with the... I'm, I'm just not happy with this situation having one of the uh, um, AC legs here connected to Earth, you know. Uh, and the manufacturer is not confident to give me any information about this whole thing. They don't understand what I'm doing here and why. But I need to have this link, otherwise my charger would not work. And again, as I said in my last video, there's nothing wrong with the inverter itself. It's totally safe to use it like this with the floating 240 volt here. You don't need to bridge this. This is only for me, for my uh, Tesla charger. For everything else, this is totally fine, totally safe. The, the only thing you need to do is ground the inverter, which grounds all your outputs here as well. And this is all you need to do. The inverter is totally fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. Holy shit. Uh, this takes almost all the space of the enclosure here. Yeah, well, I can't fit it on the outside, as many of you have suggested, because of heat and everything. But I would really like to have everything inside this enclosure. This was the main purpose to buy this enclosure, you know. Well, it fits over here, and I've still got enough space for the charge controllers down here and up here. And because this inverter has all the connections at the bottom, so it may be a good idea to mount this up high here. There's, there's nothing I need to connect at the top of the inverter. And 150, this is a big block in here. This is huge. Oh, I'm still finding batteries everywhere. Yeah, I took the plunge. I bit the nail and swallowed the cookie. Is this what you're saying? So I bought the Victron Phoenix Smart Inverter with uh, 3 kilowatts as well. And I got it relatively cheap on eBay now from a from a Victron authorized dealer here in Australia. It comes with five years warranty, so that's pretty good. And I could log in the deal for 1160 Australian dollars here. It is still a lot of money and I need to charge the car probably for the next 18 years or something to get this money back. But you know, this inverter has already the MEN link, the link between neutral and earth installed. And it also hooks in with all the other Victron devices I have now. It connects to the same Bluetooth network and communicates with the other devices. So it is aware of what is happening in the network. And also you can program the lower threshold, the low voltage disconnect as well. This is not fixed anymore as in other inverters. You can now program this with the uh, Victron app. Why is this tripod actually not straight? Ah, oh, that's better now. So we actually can program the new inverter then to turn off before the BMS kicks in. And this is a big plus. The BMS will stay alive, keeps charging the battery then, but it turns off the inverter, say, at 2.8 volts. I don't actually think we can program a single cell voltage. This is more the pack voltage, what we have to program, but still we can program it. Okay, because this is coming from Victoria down south, here in Australia. It may take a week or so until it's here. Uh, I really like this inverter here. It's really good and we have tested it with a Tesla on over 3000 watts and I had it running for about three hours on 2.5 kilowatts. No issues at all. The chassis stayed cool with 39 degrees. Well, we had 35 outside. So 39 is pretty cool in these conditions then. And there was no problem at all. So I really think these are robust and good good inverters. I just need to swap it out because of the MEN link situation I have explained in the other video. So if you are building a 48 volt battery here in Australia, well, and you are in the market for an inverter, well, get in contact with me and we figure something out. 46 degrees, 115 Fahrenheit. Well, talking about heat concerns that you have with the uh, electrical enclosure here, well, the inverter gets really, really super hot here. This is unbelievable, while the inverter stays very cool. I was expecting it the other way around, actually, but this one gets really, really hot. And we are pushing only 20 amps through it, not even 35, so we are not close to the limit at all. 
you know with this electrical cabinet here I'm having here in my garage you actually don't need to do all this you know I've I said this before in one of my videos but um you know this is just me I want to be flexible I want to be I probably change my system all the time with different charge controllers and different inverters and and BMSs and everything so I I don't You know, if you're just building your system at home or in your garage or shed or wherever you live and you want to use it, you know, you don't, you don't do it like, like I do actually here with all these individual components. See, I need to ground the whole system here, all these rails here, because I have put in these extenders and they are not conductive. But you know, these all-in-one units they they've got the MPPT charge controller, the inverter, what else? All the cabling, and also a utility charger included in one box. And this is probably half the size of mine. And you connect your battery and your solar panels, and you are done. Oh, got no power in my left arm. Oh, jeez. It does work. It works. Cool. Yeah. And most of these all-in-one units, they also have a transfer switch included. So that means if your battery is empty, it automatically switches back to grid power, to shore power, and also charges the battery and supplies all your equipment with normal power then. And I don't, I don't even have such a transfer switch. If my battery is empty, the BMS will turn off and disconnect everything, the inverter will die, and that's it. I've got no power in the garage at all. But with a transfer switch, it will actually reconnect to your normal power then and supply everything, and you don't even feel it. So if you are going just to build your system, I would 100% take one of these all-in-one units connect this all up and you're done. You probably can set this all up within one day. I think it's the drill bit here. This is one of these non-sharp ones. Yeah, get one of these all-in-one units. Uh, I link some of them down below and on my website as well. Really good units, very easy to install and you're done. I'm not sure what cable size I need for grounding my solar panels here. I cannot find anything in Google. They're all just saying it needs to be grounded, but not what size you need. I don't know. I've, I'm using the 4mm cable now. Well, I've got a 1.5mm cable as well, but I use the 4 just to be on the safe side. I'm not sure. I don't think this is the right crimper. All these. Ah. Uh, it's stuck in the crimper now, I can't get it off anymore. I need more tools. This is all very tight here. Okay, and this concludes our today's grounding of the solar panels. Uh, well, it was so hot on the roof. We had another 34 today. And I waited until late afternoon, but still, it is very warm. So that means... Okay guys, so far this video from today, well, nothing really special. A little bit of an update about the inverter situation. And we have grounded our solar panel strings on the roof now. I'll still need to tidy up the cables on the roof with cable ties and put some silicon around this conduit and then we are pretty much done for this side of the roof. Okay, and uh, let me know if you are interested in this inverter and we get in contact and figure something out. And until then, stay charged, stay safe and we shall see us again in the next video very soon. Thanks guys, bye bye. Ah. 
Nice.